open your mouth and I will fill it. I'm going to share some scripture and some personal experiences about what happens when we open our mouths for God. God will blow your mind with some amazing things. You're having coffee with Conrad on. Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net, rocks of revelation being poured out to you. My passion is for you to have a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. Today I'm going to be talking about opening our mouths and letting God fill it with the words that will change our atmosphere, the words that will change lives. As I'm fixing to get pumped about this, because I'm going to dissect this for you. I'm going to tell you something that's going to blow your mind. Before... I did this podcast. I was reading Facebook posts from which I thought I might actually do a podcast from. You should follow me on pa- on Facebook. I ask questions that rock. Questions like, uh, where did the doctrine God loves everyone unconditionally come from? Great post. Check it out. As I was generating some ideas on what to podcast about, I realized that God, you know, the spiritual aspect of my relationship with God was leaning me to not podcast about those topics. I, and I was wondering if God wanted me to do a podcast at all. And then as I was being quiet, I heard, open your mouth and I will fill it. This is a phrase that I heard at the foot of my bed in Lampasas, I think around 2014. And I heard that in the spirit. And I dug into my Bible to find out what it meant. I podcasted about it a few times, but I'm going to podcast again about it from a different perspective. Does open your mouth wide and God will fill it mean that God is going to feed me? Yes, possibly, but that's not all. I believe the Lord pretty much guarantees us daily bread, you know, give us this day our daily bread. But you notice there's many times that the apostles and disciples will fast. People fasted Jesus fasted while they were following Jesus for three days. And in Acts, I believe they were on a boat and they didn't eat for 14 days. And we know that Moses, Elijah, and Jesus fasted 40 days. So maybe. That's one of the things that that means. And we know that Jesus won't leave us nor forsake us because in all of those examples, uh, they didn't die. <laughs> he was with them. He, he sustained them. Does open your mouth and I will fill it mean that I will start, that God will show up when I start speaking? Well, I'm going to say experientially yes and no. Okay, because I've noticed that when I start speaking, Oftentimes, God just uses that and shows up. Now, notice that he didn't say, open your mouth, and I will always fill it each and every time. Let's read the exact scripture so you know the the reference that I'm referring to. Everybody open your Bibles to Psalms 81, 10. The verse that's refer- that refers to this in the Bible is Psalm 81, 10. I'm the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. So that's kind of what he's talking about when I heard, open your mouth and I will fill it. You know, Jesus opened his mouth and began to teach them in the Sermon on the Mount. In Jeremiah it says, be not afraid of their faces, for I'm with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, behold, I put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant. Jeremiah opened his mouth and prophesied and did all those things. Ezekiel prophesied to these dry bones. God is showing them that they need to open their mouth and speak the oracles of God. And one of the things as I was meditating about this podcast, as I was praying about it, is this passage about take no thought before him what we're going to say. That comes from Mark 13, 11. But when they shall lead you and deliver you, take no thought before him what you shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now let's chew on this a little bit. Jesus was talking about the disciples 
the disciples being persecuted and even thrown into prison or even killed for sharing the gospel. And I know that this is something unheard of in the itching ears doctrines of today. You know, we take phrases like, I can do all things. They sell the shirts, <laughs> you know, like they even take out the through Christ out of it. So they'll sell, sell more shirts. But I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And, you know, people are taking that verse, twisting a little bit like, oh, I can pole vault in the Olympics and not really reading the context of what that passage actually says. We know God will never leave us nor forsake us, even though we may think he is at the moment. At the moment of this podcast, I had three different friends of mine in three three different parts of earth, friends in ministry, who are really going through the fire, the desert, and the valley, like all at the same time. And I, I had some words for them this week in a dream in a shower, and while I was just kind of sitting there, not thinking, I got a word, and and I gave the words, and it turns out that they were words that they needed to hear, because like in this Mark 13, 11 scenario, they're so caught up in their fiery trial that they needed someone to tell them. I mean, have you ever been in a trial and you're just like so involved in it that you can't even hear from God because your carnal mind's going, you know? And these were words that I was not supposed to keep to myself. This was an open your mouth. I mean, we're supposed to speak those words to people. And I'm going to tell you something. Use it or lose it. That's, that's something that seems to hold true. If God gives you a word from somebody, now I want you to season this with salt, okay? You need to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. But if he gives you a word and you don't give it consistently, like, well, I got this word, but I'm not going to give it because I'll look stupid. (laughs) I know know what that feels like. I'm going to tell you something. God's going to start using someone else that does deliver the word. So use it or lose it. Now, these happen to be timely words for all three people. But just imagine what would have happened if I did not open my mouth. Now, more to the point, What would happen if you don't open your mouth when God gives you a word of knowledge or a prophetic word? Now, let's step back and put ourselves in the shoes of the apostles. At the time, Jesus was telling them to take no thought. Okay, they weren't supposed to think. They were supposed to probably be killed, questioned by torture, and probably, you know, not in that order, but they were going to have things that would weigh heavily on their minds. I mean, can you imagine being brought before the council or the judge? I mean, what are you going to do when that happens? It's it's human nature to think, how am I going to get out of this mess? You start leaning on your own understanding, the things that have worked for you in the past, and you're going to try to get yourself out of this situation where you don't get your head chopped off, right? And I want you to maybe pause this, and I want you to think back at some of the trials that you have been through, when maybe you weren't about to make rent, or you lost your job, or uh, when you were about to stand before the judge because you're going to lose your license, or maybe you might go to jail for a couple of years, and maybe you're going about to lose your children because of some accusation which was either true or false. Whatever devastating event that was going to happen, I want you to think back about how you thought. (laughs) Did you start thinking about how am I going to, you start scrambling for research, you start scrambling for resources on how you can get out of it, right? You may even go, okay, well, let's do the Bible thing, and let's quote, the multitude of counselors make war. You might even start asking your friends. But having this spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus calls us to a higher code of spiritual conduct. I want you to know, The devil lives, and he loves living and working in the rationale. He loves the if-then conjecture. We see a lot of this on Facebook. He loves to use all sorts of mental gymnastics and carnal reasoning in order to manipulate people into serving him and doing his will based in selfishness and self-preservation. Self-preservation. Those who seek to save their lives shall lose it. 
but those that lose it for the sake of Jesus will have it for everlasting. And it's at, it's at these times where we need to su- submit, therefore, to God and resist the devil, and he will flee. Now, sometimes it may take quoting the word three times, like Jesus did in Matthew 4 and Luke 4. Notice Jesus had to say, it is written three times, as the devil was using if, 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 right? But I want you to understand what wielded the sword. We know the sword is the word of God, but you also know that Jesus was driven by the Holy Spirit to be tempted of the devil. He was led by the Holy Spirit to go through this. It depends on which gospel you're reading. But we know from Ephesians chapter 6, the sword of the Spirit is the word of God. And we can see that the sword of the Spirit is the word of God. You've heard me say in previous podcasts that the Holy Spirit of truth wields that sword and he gave the Spirit gave Jesus and the believer, Jesus was modeling for the believer the right words to say just exactly at the right time. In other words, in that hour, he will give us what to say. If you haven't subscribed to Coffee with Conrad from ConradRocks.net, you need to drop everything and do it right now. Unless you are driving or operating heavy machinery or you are a demon or something. Now, I love quoting scripture, but even quoting Scripture with our intellect is not hitting the bullseye of what I'm trying to say here. This is why it's paramount to have a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. So when we're in front of magistrates, we're in front of powers and principalities, we can rest assured that God has us. He's got our back. It's all about Him. It's not about us. We may be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, And we don't care. We're not going to bow to your idol. (laughs) We're not going to bow to your idol. They took no thought for the flesh. They didn't care. And when we're worried about our bodies, we're worried about our livelihoods, this is where we need to examine ourselves to see where we are in the faith. Because when our flesh is threatened, then the reins of our hearts are being pricked, and they're being tried. And we know those scriptures that Jesus searches and tries the reins of the heart. That's what's dragging our heart around. And I want you to think about this for a second. Think about your house. If it's on fire, the thing that you value most will be the thing that you run in to save. This isn't something that you can meditate beforehand. I mean, your house is on fire. Okay, oh, I've thought about this. (laughs) No, that's not how that works. At that moment, you're going to learn a lot about yourself. There's going to be this knee-jerk examination that you have to run in there and get what you love, what you value the most at that very moment. This trial by fire, your house burning down would be a trial by fire, lets you know your hierarchy of values. Who is the Lord of your life right there at that time? What do you value? I mean, you can tell a lot about yourself during a trial like that. Now, also, if someone puts a gun to your head like they did in the Columbine Massacre, and they ask you if you love Jesus, you know, if you say, yes, I'm going to kill you, you know, you're going to find out what you're made of at that very moment. Meditating beforehand will not reveal the true you. However, meditating, you know, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. In it, We'll meditate day and night, and with it, you'll she'll have good success. So meditating on the Word does help mold the truth. We're hiding the Word of God in our hearts so that we don't sin against Him when we have this trial by fire, so that we, we hide the Word of God in our hearts so that we can be instant in and out of season, and that the Spirit can use those scriptures. They can use the sword. The Spirit can use the sword at that moment. Now, I'm going to tell you something that I believe. During this trial by fire, You know, when Jesus says, take no thought, and in that hour, the Spirit's going to tell you what to say. He says, it's not going to be you. It's going to be the Spirit. And we have to trust that this is accurate, that this is true. That means believe in Jesus. That's faith. Believe in what Jesus says. Take no thought, and I'll show up. The Spirit's going to show up at that moment, right? Like that, that moment in time where he met the woman at the well. There's all these geographical locations in a point in time. Right? So think about Stephen. When Stephen was being martyred, he was in front of the religious rulers of the day, and guess what? The anointing came on him, 
right? He didn't meditate beforehand what he was going to say. And guess what? The naysayers allowed him to speak. This was a supernatural spiritual thing. I've been in a room full of atheists smoking pot when the anointing hit me. I was the only Christian in the room. And it's, when I think back, it's kind of comical because they couldn't say anything while I was talking. You notice Stephen had this long discourse and they let him say it. Their mouths were stopped at what he was saying. It was an amazing moment for me because these words that came out of my mouth, I had no idea that they were coming. You know, and they couldn't speak. And it wasn't because they were high. <laughs> I mean, you know, it wasn't because they were high. It was a God thing, you know? So, so far in this podcast, we've been dealing with, you know, open your mouth and I will fill it. When we're in these bad situations and we're about to be killed or thrown in prison or some type of a trial, but open your mouth and I will fill it means much more than just that passage of scripture where Jesus is talking about take no thought beforehand because it's going to be the Spirit speaking through you. I want let's let's think about Peter. When he saw the man that had faith to be healed, he said, you know, rise up in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and walk. He perceived something that was invisible. Faith is the evidence of things unseen. This was a spiritual thing. He saw in the spirit and not with physical eyes. So Peter opened his mouth and then God took over and healed that man for his glory. Just imagine what would have happened if Peter didn't say anything. He was prompted by the Spirit. Peter was in the right place at the right time. His steps were ordained of God. You know, the steps of good men are ordained by God. He was walking after the Spirit, Romans chapter 8. We read about that a lot. So if we live in the Spirit and we walk after the Spirit, these types of moments will occur often, if not all the time. Konnichiwa. This is Stephen Barrett from Holy Fire, Japan, and you're listening to Coffee with Conrad. Now, moving into my practical experience of open your mouth and I will fill it, I can say I've learned a lot by simply opening my mouth and talking. One thing is for certain, nothing will ever happen if I don't open my mouth. I say divine appointments don't happen while sitting on the couch. We need to follow the Spirit and then open our mouths. I've gone up to people, and I had no idea what to say beforehand. I was taking no thought, you know, and as soon as I get there, I'll just start talking about the weather or something. You know, it's a knee-jerk thing from when I was in business. I was always about establishing rapport in the first few seconds. Just something I kind of do as a habit from the old man, I guess. But before you know it, something anointed may come out of my mouth, and I wonder where that came from, or I may get kind of a word of knowledge, not the full dead-on thing, because they kind of come as you're talking, you know. Or sometimes nothing at all happens, and I just hang in there waiting for God to show up. And those are those are rough moments, to be quite honest. And sometimes somebody else will get anointed. This is surprising, but uh, I was the guy that initiates the conversation, you know, and I've had strangers in public, people I've never met. Like, I'll I'll start the conversation, but they're the ones they get anointed, and they start preaching. It's happened more than once. That sounds hard to believe, but it does happen. I'm not the one to do the, the preaching, but the person I met suddenly raises their voice, and there's people around. It's happened more than once. I have two, two times in my mind right now. That's mind-blowing. So I, I said all of this to encourage you to step up and step out in your call. God has a call on your life. If he didn't, You wouldn't have made it this far in the podcast, to be quite honest. So pray about being led in the Spirit. Pray about talking to people even when you don't feel anointed. And I'm a firm believer in following the Spirit, you know, feeling anointed. (laughs) You know, I'm, I'm, I'm into that. But sometimes we're following the Spirit, and it doesn't have anything to do with feelings, okay? I believe that feelings kind of, you know, you'll you'll feel something, you'll sense something. It's a big part of following the Spirit, but not always, okay? So when I say that, I mean, sometimes we feel this leading or this prompting of the Holy Spirit to talk to someone. But I'll go up to someone anyways if I feel that I'm using that as a cop-out for not ministering the gospel. Does that make sense? <laughs> Hopefully that's making sense to you. I'm not rigid on this, but some people use that phrase, oh, I don't feel led. And, and then they never do anything. 
I don't feel led. And then they never do anything. That's a cop out to me. So I'll go up and start talking to people, even if I don't feel led. So if you do sense a highlight, you know, the little mouse pointer in the spirit over someone in the produce aisle at Walmart, you know what? I want to encourage you. Just go up and talk to them. Even if you don't know what you're going to say, even if you don't have a dead on word of knowledge, I often go up and I get like part of a word of knowledge. And I'm like, you know, I think this is God's way of showing me that if I just start talking, that word of knowledge will come as I'm talking. Open your mouth and I will feel it's kind of like he'll give it to me as I go. And that does happen quite often. But I'm going to tell you something for sure. Nothing is going to, you're not going to see miracles. You're not going to see stuff happen if you don't open your mouth. You got to open your mouth. You got to be bold. You got to forget about what you're going to look like. You got to be willing to look stupid for Jesus. I'm serious. You got to be willing to look stupid for Jesus. And that's when the miracles have happened. And you'll go, wow, I never would have had this experience if I didn't go there. And if I didn't open my mouth, I, this never would have happened. And after you do it a few times, you'll know what I'm talking about. That was extremely deep. But I can feel deep down in my digital self that you are right on. God bless you very much. I, I thank you so much for being in my life. If this has touched you, please comment, share, and like wherever you're listening to this podcast. And I enjoy your comments, and sometimes I will feature them in my podcast like right now. R. Houtman, he was talking about my... Uh, podcast on overcoming tonight overcoming demonic night terror i'll put the link in the show notes and he said good testimony at 1858 we're getting rid of or burning particular books and music had such a physical impact now i want you to understand when we have devoted things of destruction in our houses it's kind of like hey come on in devil here's your access you know it's a thing to destruction it's something god detests and there's some passages in the bible uh, Acts 19, 19, and 20, many of them which also used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So you notice that when they when they burnt their occult books, and I have a part in my book, Open Your Eyes to My Supernatural Journey, where I burned my heavy metal CDs, where I burned my occult books, and, and, and I was delivered, and I was mightily changed. You know, and here it says when they burned that mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So you got to get that stuff out of your house, not just throwing it away, but burning it. And that comes from Deuteronomy seven twenty five twenty six. The graven images of their God shall you burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it's an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. <laughs> I mean, do you hear this? Don't bring something cursed in your house, lest you be cursed like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it's a cursed thing. Of course, I'll, I'll include the link to that uh, podcast in my show notes. And here's another comment from Sal LaCorey, talking about groaning intercession, my podcast on Daniel Nash. I appreciate hearing this. I've been praying so much this past couple of years and even more so recently. Almost nothing else satisfies me as much as praying. I can tell I'm being drawn more to God than ever. But recently it seems I'm all out of words, yet I was compelled to keep praying. Sometimes I would just sort of moan or groan naturally, so I just went with it. I'd already known the Bible speaks of this, but I never naturally felt as if it was all I could do in prayer. So I appreciate the podcast, Sal. So, yeah, check it out in that podcast. Uh, I talk about Daniel Nash, a uh, groaning intercessor, and also how I was groaning before I knew it was biblical. I mean, did you know Jesus groaned on the way to the tomb before he raised Lazarus from the dead? All creation groans. We groan in the spirit. Anyway, check out that podcast. I'll have the link to the YouTube podcast in my show notes. God bless you. I want to thank you for being in my life. Like I said, I love you. Please like, share, and comment wherever you're listening to this podcast. Until we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at comradrocks.net.